So today we're going to look at um, some text features that you're going to see for informational text. The first ones that you're going to view, I'll make this large, are going to be things like bold print and italics. Bold print in nonfiction is often used to show you um, important words. Right? Those bold printed words are often located, the definitions are located usually in a glossary at the back of the book. Italics are often used to call attention to words or phrases, sometimes even the definition of a word within a paragraph. So the next feature has to do with our photographs, okay? Photographs are sometimes called illustrations or pictures that the author puts in the text so you can get a visual image of what the subject is that they're talking about. In this case, they have a photograph or an illustration of a giraffe. The purpose is so you can see what a giraffe looks like in case you weren't sure what a giraffe look like, looks like. You can also tell from this picture how tall the giraffe might be just by looking at the size the giraffe is compared to the trees. All photographs and illustrations also have what are called captions. They're usually located either underneath the illustration or photo or to the side of it. Sometimes they even put the caption right across the photo or illustration. By reading the caption, you're go it's going to explain what the picture or photograph is about. In this case, it tells us that the giraffe is an African even-toed mammal, the tallest of all land-living animal species. Okay, we can also learn that males can be up to 4.8 to 5 meters tall and weigh up to 1,360 kilograms. The record size bull was 5.87 meters tall and 2,000 kilograms. But we also learned that females are generally slightly shorter and weigh less than the males do. Many of our test questions on nonfiction tests will come from an illustration that has a caption because you can obtain a lot of information from a caption. Another text feature is charts or diagrams, okay? Here we have a chart that um, shows how a frog or an egg becomes a frog, the life cycle, okay? And this chart explains the different steps that eggs go or frogs do. Frogs lay eggs, they become embryos and all the way through tadpoles, right, into the, them becoming a young frog, an adult frog. Authors include charts in their text to help you learn more information about the subject. In this case, we're going to learn more information about the life cycle of the frog and the steps the frog goes through in order to develop into a full-grown frog. The other is a diagram. Now a diagram and a chart can look very similar, but they are different. A diagram gives us a picture or an illustration of whatever they're talking about, and it tends to point out different parts of the object. For example, in this bicycle, they have arrows pointing to different parts of the bicycle and telling you what they are. All right, so this is the saddle area, this is the pedal. So diagrams will tell us the parts of the object. All right, this is extremely helpful when we have complicated items um, and that they're presenting new information to you. You can also see test questions that come from diagrams. The next thing you'll see in nonfiction text are graphs, 
whether they're a bar graph, a pie graph, or a um, circle graph, or a line graph. Authors put these graphs in our nonfiction text to give you more information. Okay, sometimes it'll just be so you can see the number of things or the percentage of things in a pie diagram, or even how things change over time with a line graph. Some of the most important text features have to do with what they actually write. Now we have titles, headings, and subheadings. In this illustration, you'll see that of course the title is at the top of the page and it's larger than anything else. The title usually gives you an idea of what the main idea or central idea of the whole article is going to be about. It should catch your attention. Sometimes, but this article doesn't show it, there will be a few words underneath the title as a little bit more information and that would be a subtitle. Then we have headings. Notice that we have words that are slightly smaller than the title, but they're still bold printed. Sometimes they're green or red or blue, right? But they're not quite as small print as the normal text here in the paragraphs, but they are bold printed or colored to grab your attention. These headings tell you what information you're going to read in the next few, in the next section. So under headaches can be a pain, here's how to treat them. These two paragraphs all right, are going to tell us how to, how to treat a migraine. So it tells us what information we're going to be reading. The same here with headaches, which type do you get? That tells us the different types of headaches and that they're going to talk about it in that section. However, underneath a heading, you might have a subheading. Notice they're smaller than the headings. They're also bold printed or they're another color, but these heading, these subheadings are part of the paragraph. Notice how they're not above the pair, the section, All right? And so it'll tell us specifically this tension headaches are this, migraines are this. They're going to give us even more detailed information on the different types. You will also see table of contents in a lot of our nonfiction or informational text. Now, if we're reading our magazine articles and journal articles, you're not going to see a table of content. But as you're reading your nonfiction books, you will notice that there will be a table of contents. The purpose is to show you, like you would in an article, the heading or the title of each chapter and what page you're going to find information on. So if we wanted to know about the process of um, rain and how the rain comes from the clouds, we're probably going to look here at clouds turn into rain and we know then to go to page 10. It'll also tell us that what page the glossary is on so that we can go to the back of the book and look up words that we are not sure of as we are reading.